Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, thank you so much for joining me. I'm sure you've all seen this weapon system before, the FN Mag 7.62mm GPMG or General Purpose Machine Gun, known in the Canadian Armed Forces as the C6. And we're going to go over a little bit about how the Canadian Armed Forces have structured the use of the weapon system. Now, I want to be extremely clear in this video, this is not designated as a military training video. It is not to be used as a reference guide for training. This is purely for informative purposes, to give you an understanding of the kind of procedures that operate the C6. Uh, the footage that you're looking at is actually from an old training video uh, that was found online. A uh, big shout out to A. Ryan and uh, him finding this footage. It's really cool, old school sort of Canadian Armed Forces educational training videos, but this is not to be used as reference or for any purpose of training. Please make that very, very clear. It's just to give you a bit of an awareness of how uh, the weapon system operates and the kind of conducting of, you know, particular procedures or techniques that they use, and we still use to this day, to operate this machine gun effectively. And the one thing that really reaches out to me for the C6 is it's still working perfectly to this day. Uh, it's an old weapon, but it's functional and does exactly what you ask it to do. Uh, we all really do respect this weapon system, I think, from many militaries around the world, and uh, I do love the C6. It is, really is incredible to fire. Uh, so let's take a look about how the uh, weapon system works and the way on which it is handled and manipulated within uh, a soldier's routine as a machine gunner. On the order, load! Lie behind the GPMG with the legs together. Hold the small of the butt with the left hand in an overhand grasp. Grasp the pistol grip, forefinger outside the trigger guard. Tilt the gun to the right and open the feed cover. Check that ammunition belt links are not loose or damaged. Position the belt on the feed tray, links uppermost, first round against the cartridge stop. Hold the belt in position with the left hand and close the feed cover. Return the hands to the correct position on the butt and pistol grip and the GPMG to the upright position. Ready. On the order. Ready. Or a range being ordered. Set the sights. Lift the butt into the shoulder and cock the GPMG. Grasp the pistol grip with the right hand and place the forefinger on the trigger. If no further order is received, apply the safety catch with the left hand. Grasp the butt with the left hand. Sight setting. The rear sight can be used either folded down for the light roll or raised to a vertical position for sustained fire. Both faces are graduated at intervals of 100 meters. The 200 to 800 meter graduations on the upper face are used when the back sight is folded down. A slider with two spring catches to keep the sight fixed in any set position allows ranges to be set and adjusted. In this position, the rear sight forms a battle sight with peephole. The 800 to 1,800 meter graduations on the reverse face are used when the sight is raised. Sighting is through an aperture sight drilled in the adjustable slider. The sight should be set at 200 meters when not in use. The foresight is a single blade between two foresight protectors. The foresight blade is aligned with the target to form the correct sight picture. Firing. On the order, Fire! the trigger should be squeezed long enough to fire a burst of three to five rounds. The trigger should then be fully released. Observation of the burst is most important. The moment the trigger is released, the left eye should be opened and the area of the target observed to ascertain the impact of the rounds. Make any necessary alterations to the sight or aim and then continue firing at the normal rate of 50 rounds per minute. If rapid fire is ordered, increase the rate to about 100 rounds per minute. Rates of fire. There are two rates of fire. Normal rate, 50 rounds per minute fired in short bursts of three to five rounds. Rapid rate, 100 rounds per minute fired in short bursts. Rapid fire is the fastest rate at which accuracy can be maintained. It is only to be used when the target warrants it. For example, a large number of enemy in the open at short range, 
or for short periods when providing covering fire for friendly troops. There are four types of targets which are engaged by the GPMG in the sustained fire role. Point target. A point target appears not to have width or depth, though it may have both. Traversing target. A traversing target has greater width than depth. Oblique target. An oblique target appears to have width and depth and is not at right angles to the machine gun position. Moving target. A moving target is a vehicle or aircraft which moves at more than 10 kilometers or 6 miles per hour. Slower targets are engaged as point targets. Firing drill. Point target. On the order to fire, use only the left forefinger on the trigger and the thumb behind the pistol grip. This method ensures that pressure from the firing hand does not move the gun. The following is the sequence for firing at a point target. Put the safety catch at fire. Check the aim through the sight. Move the head to one side in order to observe the tracer and strike. Fire the length of burst required. Check the aim and correct if necessary. Repeat the procedure. On the order, stop, cock the gun, put the safety catch at safe, ensure that the aim is correct, and report on. Firing drill, oblique target. The sequence of firing at an oblique target is very similar to that for traversing targets. The gunner must ensure that the correct elevation is maintained over the width of the target. When fire is being observed by the fire controller, he can give corrections for elevation during the traversing fire by ordering, Stop! At 100! Go on! It may be necessary to give such orders a number of times during an engagement. Moving Target When firing at a moving target, the machine gun must be aimed ahead of the target a sufficient distance to cause the bullet and target to arrive at the same point simultaneously. This distance is measured in target lengths. One target length is one lead. For machine gun fire, the leads are measured from the center of the target. To hit the target, the gunner must aim at a point ahead of the target equal to the estimated number of leads, fire, and maintain lead by tracking the target. Moving targets are engaged in the same way as oblique targets. Fire is adjusted by observation of strike or tracer. Too great a lead is better than too little, because the vehicle will run into the line of fire. Intelligent use of the lead table includes immediate application of fire followed by corrections based on observation of strike. Using the deflection drum to engage a moving target is only feasible at longer ranges as the amount of traverse is limited to 200 mils. At closer ranges, the only method of engaging moving targets is the ambush method. For a directly approaching target, the point of aim will be approximately the center of the base. And for a vehicle moving directly away, the point of aim is at the center of the top of the target. 
Adjustment of fire. The center of the beaten zone must be centered on the target as soon as possible. The general principles designed to assist the gunner in accomplishing this are as follows. Direction. Direction should only be adjusted when it is certain that full effect is not being accomplished. If the target is small, traversing right or left will ensure that the target is fully covered. If the error is large, measure the adjustment necessary by using binoculars or hand angles and order the adjustments as a number of mils on the tripod. For example, Go right 8 mils! Elevation When there is no guide to the amount of adjustment required, one bold adjustment is better than a series of small ones. When the target is on rising ground, the tendency is to underestimate the adjustment necessary. Immediate action. If the GPMG stops or fails to fire, cock the GPMG, lower the butt, open the feed cover, clear the feed tray, and close the feed cover again as quickly as possible. Raise the butt into the shoulder and align the sights with the target. Squeeze the trigger. A round may be fired. Lower the butt, reload, raise the butt into the shoulder and cock the GPMG. Realign with the target and continue firing. Stoppage is remedied by the immediate action. Expended belts, damaged rounds, Live round partly fed due to a damaged link, misfired round, hard extraction, and damaged link. If while carrying out the IA, the cocking handle cannot be fully pulled to the rear, a damaged link is jamming the feed poles. Holding the cocking handle as far to the rear as possible, hook the thumb of the right hand in the trigger guard. Open the feed cover, clear the feed tray, and close the feed cover. Raise the butt up into the shoulder and complete the cocking action. Align the sights with the target and squeeze the trigger. Lower the butt, reload, raise the butt into the shoulder and cock the GPMG. Align with the target and continue firing. If after applying the IA, the GPMG will still not fire and you cannot fully cock the gun, Act as previously taught. However, before reloading, open the feed cover and examine the feed pawls and springs. If the feed pawls are not working freely, clean and oil them. Load and carry on firing. A mechanical fault may cause the GPMG to fire after the trigger has been released. If this happens, hold the GPMG firmly in the shoulder. Twist the belt at the point of entry into the feedway, thus breaking the belt or jamming the feed. When the GPMG stops firing, unload, reload, adjust for more gas, raise the butt, cock the gun and carry on firing. Barrel change. Normal rates of fire will not unduly overheat the barrel. However, rapid fire and long bursts of fire for any length of time will. With the tactical situation in mind, the gunner must use common sense and regulate the rate of fire and length of burst, remembering that overheating quickly wears the barrel. To avoid overheating, no gun is to fire more than 440 rounds, or two belts, continuously through the same barrel. Barrels are to be changed after every 440 rounds, and not used again until hand cool. To change the barrel, unload as taught. However, do not lower the butt or put the sights down. Cock the gun, lower the butt, remove the barrel, and replace it with a new barrel. Ensure that the gas regulator is set correctly. If this is not known, then the regulator is set to 1. 
also ensure that the serial numbers on the barrel match the receiver and that there are no obstructions in the barrel. Allow the working parts to go forward. Reload, raise the butt into the shoulder, cock the gun and carry on firing. After sustained rapid fire, if possible, the GPMG should be unloaded, the action cocked and top cover raised to allow the gun to cool. Gas Stoppage Drill If after applying the IA, the GPMG fires a few rounds and again stops, cock the GPMG. Put the safety catch at safe. Lower the butt. Adjust for more gas by screwing the regulator clockwise one click. Normally this can be done with the hand. However, if the regulator is too hot to handle, use the nose of a round taken from the belt. Raise the butt into the shoulder. Put the safety catch at fire and continue firing. At the earliest opportunity, the GPMG is to be unloaded, the barrel removed, and the gas plug and block cleaned. Load, unload, two-man crew. The GPMG can be operated by the gunner alone or with the assistance of a number two. The number two is to lie to the left of the gun, close to the gunner. When loading, the gunner raises the top cover and the number two positions the belt on the feed tray, ensuring that his fingers are clear before the top cover is closed. When unloading, the number two removes the belt from the feed tray. Field stripping. But. Carry out safety precautions, but do not close the ejection opening cover. Hold the pistol grip with the left hand, grip the butt with the right hand, and with the forefinger of the right hand, press up on the butt catch. Lift the butt upwards until clear of the receiver. Recoil system. With the thumb, push the main spring rod slightly forward and upward. This disengages the stud on the guide rod from the keyhole-shaped slot in the receiver and allows the main spring and guide rod to be withdrawn. To remove the piston and breech block, support the receiver and, with the other hand, pull the cocking handle sharply to the rear. The piston and breech block can then be drawn clear. Push the cocking handle forward. Barrel. Keeping the receiver upright, press the locking stud. Raise the carrying handle to a vertical position. Push the barrel forward and lift it off. Gas regulator. With the barrel removed from the GPMG, unscrew the gas regulator. Before removing it, put one hand under the regulator to prevent losing the split collars. Push the plug on the gas block seating to the rear and remove it. Under no circumstances will the gas regulator be stripped further except by a weapons technician. The tripod. The tripod legs are held in position by clutch plates and secured by clamp levers. On the bracket at the pivot point of the legs is a direction dial, the markings of which are to be ignored. A cradle is fitted to the bracket by a ball and socket joint. This is secured by the cradle locking lever. When the cradle locking lever is unlocked, it allows for a 6,400 mil traverse of the cradle. The cradle is buffered to absorb the recoil of the gun during firing. The gun is secured to the forward end of the cradle by a mounting pin. A rear mounting pin when fitted to the gun, engages in a slot in the rear mounting seating of the cradle. The cradle can elevate the gun to a maximum of 400 mils up and 200 mils down. A deflection drum fitted to the right rear of the cradle is used to obtain adjustment in direction. When the drum is pulled outwards, a clicking device is brought into operation. Each click is equal to two mils. When the drum is pushed inwards, the clicking device is taken out of operation. Adjustments for elevation are obtained by rotating the elevation drum on the left rear of the cradle. The lock lever must be released before making adjustments and then locked again before use. On the left bar of the cradle, 
is a dovetailed slot to take the tripod sight bracket. Mounting lines on the tripod bracket and clutch plates enable the tripod to be set in either a high mount or a low mount position. Ammunition. Ammunition is supplied in belts of 220 rounds with a ratio of four ball to one tracer, one in five. The belts are of metal disintegrating link and can be easily broken or joined to give belts of any length. To separate a belt. Holding the rounds on either side of the point at which it is desired to separate the belt, twist them in opposite directions. The links at that point will disengage. To join two belts, fit the projection of the end link to the other, making sure that the links are the same way up. If there is a round in position, press the projection so that it snaps into place over the cartridge case. If no round is in position, take two links both the same way up and place them so that the projection of one fits into the gap of the other. Then interlock them by inserting the nose of a round through both links and press the round forward till the projection of the detent of the clip clicks into place in the groove at the base of the round. Dummy belts. To break down a dummy belt, remove any round from the belt by pushing the nose of the round firmly against a solid surface, thus releasing the round from the detent. Do the same with any adjoining round and so on. To make up a dummy belt, take two links, both the same way up, and place them so that the projection of one fits into the gap of the other. Then interlock them by inserting the nose of a round through both links and press the round forward until the projection of the detent of the clip clicks into place in the groove at the base of the round. Firing in CQB. During the advance, hold the gun with the right hand on the pistol grip, forefinger clear of the trigger. The left hand should hold the folding bipod legs in such a manner that the fingers are clear of the barrel and gas cylinder. When a target appears, advance the left leg in the direction of the target. The body should be leaning forward in the on-guard position. Press the gun into the right side and hold it firmly. Fire in bursts by sense of direction and correct by observing the strike. The length of the burst used depends upon the target and the range, but should never be less than three rounds. Although it is possible with training to fire while advancing, Far better results are obtained by pausing momentarily to fire each burst. Firing from the waist requires good holding and a grim determination to hit the targets rapidly and accurately. Should the gun stop, go to cover quickly. The immediate action can be carried out kneeling on the right knee with the gun resting on the left thigh. The muzzle must be kept pointing in the direction of the enemy. Other stoppages may require the gun to be placed on the ground. The gunner must remember that before the belt is fully expended, he should get to cover and load a new one. It is the duty of the number two to see that the gun does not run out of ammunition. The length of the belt will vary according to terrain and the build of the gunner, but it should not be less than 40 rounds. Observation of Fire Good observation of strike is determined largely by conditions of light and the range to the target. However, when observing, it is better to search an area around the target than to look directly at the target itself. Some factors to be considered when observing fire are as follows. Tracer. It is possible to observe tracer up to 800 meters and beyond in normal circumstances. The four tracer rounds in each 20 round burst should be carefully observed at their point of strike. If the ground around the target area affords good observation of a strike, check to observe any difference between tracer strike and ball strike. Beyond 800 meters, tracer strike cannot be observed and the gun controller must watch the strike of the burst around the target area. To do this, it may be necessary to order a burst longer than 20 rounds. The possibility of confusing tracer burnout in flight with tracer strike on the ground should be remembered. Ground. Sand, dry plowed earth, chalk subsoil, and any powdery surface generally give a good indication of strike. 
However, long grass, rocky surfaces, and undergrowth give a poor indication of strike. If any area of ground close to the target is especially suitable for observation, it is sometimes quicker and more economical to direct fire into this area in the first instance and then adjust once strike is observed. Climatic conditions. Light, mist, and mirage may affect visibility. At long ranges, a strong wind tends to blow away dust caused by strike before it can be observed. Enemy reaction. The cessation of enemy fire may indicate that your fire is effective. Traversing targets. It is not always possible to observe the strike of every burst when engaging a traversing target. Beaten zone. In battle, other guns may be engaging the same target, which makes it difficult for a gun controller to identify the strike of his own gun. When the strike is observed, it must be determined whether it is the whole or only a portion of the beaten zone. If it is just a portion of the beaten zone being observed, then what part of it? For example, if the strike is observed in front of the target, it may be the near end of the beaten zone falling on the target. Conversely, it could also be the far end of the beaten zone just falling short of the target. 